Hello, I'm James Clark from the Department of Physiology at King's College London. And in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a heat map using Microsoft Excel. So first, what is a heat map? Well, there's an example of one on the screen. And this is normally used when you're looking at genetics expression or protein expression or metabolite expression or abundancy of a certain factor within a complex tissue. So ex this example is from the uh, internet and we can see here that down the side is a number of genes and down the bottom is a number of conditions. And basically this is showing you whether a gene is upregulated or downregulated in a response to a condition. And this is used really to understand the overview of perhaps different metabolic pathways or different genetic systems involved in biology. For instance, from this figure here, you can clearly see that up here there is an abundance of green cells and these green cells indicate that there is no net change under these conditions. However, over here, there is an abundance of red cells and the red cells indicate that there is an abundance of change under these conditions. And this might make you focus on these perhaps pathways under these conditions as an indicator of something that may be involved biologically. So I've got some data in Excel, uh, and these are data kindly donated by a colleague in the lab showing the expression of five different compounds in four different groups of tissues. We've got group one, group two, group three, and group four. And each of these compounds, A, B, C, D, and E, has been measured a number of times in each of these groups. These could be individual uh, groups of cells, or patient samples or tissue. Uh, it's irrelevant for the purposes of this demonstration. Each of these groups, of course, represents a population. So group one is measured and is found to have certain amounts of A, B, C, D and E in it. And the same is done for group two, group three and group four. We have processed these data and removed any outliers. And these are the numbers that we have remaining in the data set. I have then averaged these data using this little table below. So A through to E and group 1, 2, 3 and 4 is represented in this cell as an average of all the cells representing A in group 1, for instance, C in group 1, D in group 4, etc. So these numbers are averages and it is these numbers that we now want to use to generate a heat map. So before I do that, I'm just going to show you a very neat little trick in Excel. If you're wanting to use average data like this or, or data from a table and want to have multiple copies of that table in order to use it for interrogation, statistics, creating graphs, or in this case, generating heat maps, you can highlight your set of data, right click and choose copy, go to your destination cells and right click and choose this paste link button. And what it will do is it will paste a link to these data in these new cells. So if any of these data change, so will these. I'll just demonstrate that by changing this number from 8.232 to 80.232. And you'll see now that this number has changed to 23, as has this number. So I'll just change that back. So this is a really clever way of setting up multiple tables in Excel that all have exactly the same data in them, but they are implicitly linked. You don't have to do equals B13, for instance. It's just a link, which is really useful. And we're going to use that function to make two copies of this data for the demonstration of this function. So I'm going to right click and choose copy and over in this cell, paste link. So now I've got three identical copies. This one is going to stay unedited. And then these two copies I'm going to use to demonstrate the heat map function. So the first thing I'm going to do is explain how you can generate a heat map in Excel. You might be thinking, well, this is really easy. I can just look across this and go, right, the average is 2.15. Therefore, I can just say, right, 2.15, that's going to be a blue color. I'll make the all cells containing anything between two and three blue. And I can go through and manually change these. But that's rather tedious. We can set up an automatic uh, configuration for this. And the way Excel does this is using a process called conditional formatting. The conditional formatting function is under the home menu of Excel 
a narrative's conditional formatting. And Excel has a load of inbuilt functions that allow you to highlight cells according to rules, have ranked rules, include data bars to indicate the level of expression, a really quick way of seeing your ranked data, color scales, which is what we're going to use, but in a customized way, and icon sets, which is quite interesting to flag up, for instance, cells that contain certain numbers or certain phrases. So we're going to be using a color scale rule, but we're going to make our own rules up uh, according to the colors that we want to use. And I'll explain why that's important now. So if we highlight these cells, uh, and these are our, our cells that we want to conditionally format, and we can click on conditional format and choose color scales and just choose a scale and hold my mouse. You'll see that already these cells have now been color coded according to rank. At the moment, the highest numbers are dark green and the lowest numbers are red. If I select this one, the highest numbers are red and the lowest numbers are green. So I'm going to highlight that and leave that there for the moment. The problem is, what it has done with this data set is it has ranked the data from the lowest possible number to the highest possible number and coloured them according to the rank in the table. So in this case, 0 0.62, which is the lowest number in this table, is the darkest green. It then goes up to 0 0.78. 1.24, 1.37, 1.38, etc., until the highest number of 12.49 is highlighted in red. But normally, when we're doing heat maps, we don't rank your samples. You tend to categorize your samples according to their level of expression. So if we were going to rank these according to their level of expression, we would probably say that anything less than 0.5 remains black, Anything between 0.5 and 1, for instance, will go a certain color. Anything between 1 and 3 or 1 and 4, whatever your criteria are, would be a different color, all the way up to the highest expression level, which in this case is, is 12. But you could say anything above 10, for instance, will be a red color. So the conditional formatting we've just applied, which you can apply in many different ways and use many different color schemes using the color scales option, and you can see you can get some really pretty looking schemes very quickly with this. Unfortunately, this is not what we want because it is ranking our samples according to uh, the exact numbers, not the uh, range in which those numbers sit. So I'm going to leave that one as it was there because it's a nice enough color scheme. It goes from green through to red. But now we're going to use this third table here and look at the categorizing. So before I start, I'm going to define my categories and I'm going to make a little list under here just to remind myself. So I'm going to make a note that 0, 0.00 through to 1.00 will be my first category. My second category will be 1.01 .01 to 2.50. My third category will be 2.51 to 5.00. My fourth category will be 5. 0 0.01 through to, let's say, 10. And then our final category will be 10.01 through to 15. And we'll be able to now decide what color these are going to be. And I'm going to make this one green. I'm going to make this one yellow. This one orange. This one dark orange. I can't spell and this one red. And that's going to remind me when I make up my conditional formatting now. So I highlight the cells I'm interested in, I go to conditional formatting, and I go to manage rules. And this brings up my rule management system. You'll see that there are no rules applied to the current selection. If I go to this worksheet, you'll see there is a rule applied to this small section here, but I don't want to know about that one, so I'm going to hide that for the moment and choose current selection. And I'm going to make a new rule. And my first rule is going to be to format cells that contain a value between 0 and 1. And I'm going to format those cells. So the fill color is going to be green, so I'm going to choose a nice dark green color. And I'm going to make sure my font is also the same dark green color and press OK. 
And now any cell that has a range between 0 and 1 will be formatted green with the font also the same colour green. I'm going to press OK and then OK. And you'll immediately see that those two cells that were 0.62 and 0.78 have now been highlighted and made the same green colour. So I can go back to conditional formatting and manage rules and create a new rule. My next rule, as I predefined, will be 0.01 to 2.50. And that is going to be a yellow colour. So I go to Format, choose Fill. I'll choose a nice subtle yellow colour. Go to Font and choose the same yellow colour and press OK. Since I now have this set up and I know what I'm up to, I'm going to create a new rule and this is going to be cells that contain between 2.51 and 5.0 and I'm going to format these with a fill of an orange colour, a font of the same orange colour and press OK. A new rule cells contain between 2, sorry, 5.01 and 10 are formatted with a fill of dark orange and a font of the same dark orange. And then finally my new last rule will be anything from 10.01 to 10.01. We'll have the format so the fill is a dark red colour for instance here and the font is the same dark red. And then I press OK and apply. And now immediately our heat map is generated and we can see very clearly for instance that in this top row here A under condition 1 is subtly increased but A under condition 2 is increased more, A under condition 3 is slightly less than 2 and 4 is similar to 1. For instance, in C, we can see that none of the conditions really increase the expression of these compounds a very large amount. But in E, 2 is the highest expressor, and then we've got 3 and 1 closely behind, followed by 4. So this way we have done a very quick and easy conditional formatting of these data sets. And of course, if your spreadsheet consisted of hundreds of rows, which it might well do having done some metabolomic analysis, this is a very quick and easy way of seeing what might have gone up by a small, medium or large amount. So I hope this has helped. It's a really quick and easy way of just eyeballing your data to see what expression you have and in fact could make a very good figure for a presentation or publication. Thanks. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel.